Welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge, part number 88. I wanted to, uh, I hope you all had a great uh, Yom Teruah. Uh, this Sunday, uh, this evening, I mean that evening, this Sunday evening coming, will be the beginning uh, of Yom Kippur. It'll be 24 hours of fasting, no eating, no drinking. 24 hours, if you're here, uh, we'll be here. Uh, the Lord said our last meal will be the body and blood of Christ. And then our first meal, which will run to Monday evening, will be the body and blood of Christ. We were taking the body and blood of Christ for a year from last Yom Kippur. And it's uh, very special and uh, I'm very excited for it. It's a uh, really great day of cleansing yourself. I know we can repent. When the Lord resurrected. You know, we can repent to the Lord. But it's a day, 24 hours of total repentance. When you walk out of here, you should be floating on air because everything is lifted if you hear the prayers. And I'll give an example in the next uh, PG. But I wanted to finish up on Yom Teruah. There's a couple of things that I did not get to last week, and uh, I think they're important. And, uh, on our second page of the Yom Teruah uh, handout, I put down that uh, how important it is to observe the feast of the Lord, the festivals, the appointed times, the Moed, Strong's number 4150. We are blessed. Those are commandments. Remember, the commandments are just not the Ten Commandments, okay? Then go through, I think the tradition is, there's 613 commandments. I've seen several lists with 613 commandments, not all the same ones, but there's a lot of commandments, okay? Thou shalt, thou shalt not. There's more than Ten Commandments, I guarantee you that. And honoring the Lord's festivals are definitely commandments. He says we should do them forever. Now, on the second page of my handout, I put down that Easter is not a festival, Lord's festival. Christmas is not a Lord's festival. And when we get to that, I'll explain it to you. Yes, we believe in honoring the birth of Jesus Christ, absolutely. And yes, we believe in honoring the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we should do every single day by living as a believer in Jesus Christ. But I also put down, and I'll explain that later, I also put down Rosh Hashanah, which the Jews use as the new year, uh, is also not a festival of the Lord. Now it takes place at the same time, the first day of the seventh month. Okay. Now in the Bible it talks, it says the day of the last, Yom Teruah, which we use. Now, Rosh Hashanah, I want to take a second, a minute, and uh, explain to you that. Now, in the Hebrew alphabet, that's why I say it's so important to know, uh, to discern scripture, you need to know the Lord's festivals, the Hebrew alphabet, those are the letters, and the, and the, the days and the months of the year, biblical. Now, in Exodus chapter 12, it says, and this is the beginning of months. Okay? Now, the Jews say that's the, the biblical or religious calendar. And then they have another calendar, which is called the civil calendar. And that civil calendar starts in the month of Tishrei, which is, in the biblical calendar, the seventh month. Don't get confused. I'm teaching you this so you won't get confused. Because I was very confused at the beginning. Now Rosh now comes from the first letter, uh, not the first letter, uh, the letter Resh, which means head. Okay. Now on the second page, I will have Genesis 1:1 in Hebrew. It says Bereshit. That means in the beginning. Now that's spelled, and we're going to superimpose the handout in front of me, of a bet, a 
Resh, an Aleph, a Shin, a Yud, and a Tav. And that spells Bereshit, okay? which means in the beginning. Now, if you take out the first letter, remember we read from right to left. If you take out the first letter, which is the Bet, it leaves you with Reshit. The Resh, the Aleph, the Shin, the Yud, and the Tav, which means beginning. Okay? Now the Lord speaks at, as in Exodus chapter 12, this is the beginning of months. And throughout scripture, this is the second month, the third month, the fourth month, the fifth month, the sixth month. And that's how the Lord speaks, just as the days. Day one, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. You need to scrub out your Western thinking mentality when you're trying to figure out and understand scripture. Okay? Forget about January, February, March. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I sound like the girl from The Godfather. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So you've got to think as Scripture speaks. Okay? Now, when they were taken into captivity, when the Israelites were taken into captivity, they took on paganism. Okay? Now, the paganism, and uh, when they were in Babylon, they assigned names to the months, like Nisan, Abib, Alul. The seventh month is Tishrei. Another, <coughs> okay, Tishrei is the seventh month. Now, Tishrei is spelled Tav, Shin, Resh, Yud. Now, four of those letters are in the word Reshit. The Tav, the Shin, the Resh, and the Yud, which means Reshit means head, beginning. It has a picture of a head, a pictograph of a head. So they started calling it the head of the year because that, well, that month, Tishra, has the same letters as Reshit, beginning, which comes from. Bereshi, which is the first word in the Bible. It's not scripture. Okay, so when they celebrate Rosh Hashanah, that is not scripture. It's a tradition, but it's not scripture. It's not in your Bible, not in the King James Bible, it's not in the Tanakh, it's not in the Torah. It should be the seventh month. Now there was a name assigned to it, and it's Tishra. But that has never changed. And that's why I say that Rosh Hashanah is not a Lord's festival. And they've combined it. Rosh Hashanah with Yom Teruah, they've made it, Jewish tradition, a two-day festival. The first day they used it as Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. You hear them say, uh, uh, you know, Happy New Year. Uh, uh. And the second day, is when they blow the shofar, Yom Teruah. Okay? Their greetings for Happy New Year's, Mashallah Tova. Happy New Year, greeting for a new year. But that's why I say that. They've combined it with Yom Teruah, just like Christmas. They put Christ in that word, and we'll get to this later when we talk about Hanukkah. But we all know that December 25th, Christ was not born. But you put Christ in it, Christmas, okay? It doesn't make it a Lord's festival, okay? I hope I made that clear. Uh, if not, call me, write me. My phone number is 323-702-9577. Texting me is even better if you have a question. But I ask you this, to erase Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, January, February, March, from your mind when you're thinking about it, okay? That's why we speak of, uh, we don't call Rosh Hashanah uh, a biblical festival, uh, I'm sorry, the Lord's festival, because it's not. And uh, a part of the uh, uh, Yom Teruah handout I didn't get to was a thing that was called Tashlik. It's based on Micah 719, where he says, he will turn again he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. 
and I will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Now, what I said last week was so exciting is that the last three festivals, and what superimposes the, the festivals, the first four festivals of the Lord have been fulfilled. Christ through the first three, Passover, Festival of First Fruits, and, and uh, Festival of Unleavened Bread. Okay? In Pentecost, or Shavuot, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and Pentecost was fully come, the promise of the re receiving of the Holy Spirit, 50 days after Yeshua, after Passover. But we left, the Lord left us the Comforter. Okay? Now the next three festivals are in the seventh month. The first one last week was Yom Teruah. The tenth day, which starts Sunday night, <coughs> uh, is Yom Kippur. And then five days after that, which will be here next week, we'll be celebrating it next uh, Friday evening, is uh, Sukkot, the festival of uh, booths. Now, on uh, Yom Teruah, we related it to those that were dead and alive, will be when the shofar sounds, will be going up to the Lord. Okay. And the people that did not go up to the Lord, okay, they have a time, they have a time frame to go to Yom Kippur, which is the 10th of, of the seventh month, okay, and they have this opportunity to repent, to teshuva, to turn away from the things of, of sin, of iniquity, of transgression, and turn to the Lord. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But one of the traditions of Tashlik in Yom Teruah is to, when we attach a picture, I'm sorry, a picture, I have a piece of paper, and you can write down whatever you have and ask God to forgive you of, and you write it down, and then you toss it away, okay, into the depths of the sea. Because that's what God is believing. That's what God is promising. That he will forgive our iniquities just as, it, as he tossed them in the depths of the sea, never to be remembered again. What a great God that is. To give us that opportunity from the wretch that I was myself personally, I thank God tremendously every day to have the mercy and compassion grace on my life to for my family, for my daughter to see me turn around. And I give God all the grace for that every single day of my life. Amen? And we're going to start uh, a new teaching on Yom, uh, Yom Kippur in a second.